According to intelligence information of the British Ministry of Defence, the new academic year in the aggressor country was marked by the introduction of a new model of military training of students in schools. The new academic year in Russia started with the implementation of a new model of military training for school children aimed at readiness to defend the state. It is noted that a number of new measures for military training of school children are part of the program called Fundamentals of Security and Defense of the Fatherland, designed for teenagers aged 15 to 16. In the intelligence of the British Ministry of Defense, it is emphasized that the training course within the framework of military training consists of 11 modules calculated from 68 training hours. Among the topics of this course are training in combined military combat, mastering small arms, ideological formation of values based on propaganda Kremlin narratives, acquisition of knowledge and skills that ensure readiness to fulfill the constitutional duty to protect the state. British intelligence predicts that the implementation of this program will make Russian society even more militarized. The new youth strategy approved by the government in August 2024 is aimed at increasing the prestige of military service, fostering patriotism and civic responsibility, but primarily at preparing pre-conscription teenagers mentally and physically for military service. In addition, the number of summer camps for children participating in various military activities is increasing. This strategy notes that over the past 30 years, the values of the younger generation have shifted from collectivism to individualism and from statism to cosmopolitanism. It is argued that the ideological expansionism of Russia's geopolitical competitors has led to the weakening of traditional values and the growth of individualism. The new strategy is aimed at turning this process back, while the militarization of youth is an integral part of this process, explains British intelligence. Russia has a shortage of microchips in its war against Ukraine, but the country has found a solution for this. Russian companies are using old Dutch ASML machines in the production of weapons to be used against Ukraine. According to Euromaidan media outlet, this revelation underscores challenges of enforcing sanctions in the complex supply chain. While ASML has ceased direct shipments to Russia, the country has found alternative means to keep its chips production operational. This workaround allows Russia to maintain a degree of technological self-sufficiency in its military operations, prolonging the war against Ukraine and makes Ukrainian citizens extra vulnerable to new attacks. In addition, it raises questions about the effectiveness of current export controls. As reported by Dutch newspaper Trau, intermediaries in China provide spare parts, allowing Russia to keep the machines running. As a result, Russia can produce some of its own chips for tanks, missiles and drones. These are weapons used daily to attack Ukrainian civilians and military personnel. As of 2023, Dutch company ASML, it is the largest supplier for the semiconductor industry and the sole supplier in the world of extreme ultraviolet lithography, photolithography machines that are required to manufacture the most advanced chips. The company has long since stopped sending spare parts. The company confirms that it complies with the imposed sanctions on Russia. They claim to have not shipped anything to Russia for years. One advantage for Ukraine is that the machines do not produce the most advanced chips. However, according to American University lecturer Chris Miller, author of Chip War, the fight for the world's most critical technology, this may not be a problem for Russia. According to the university lecturer, Russia can still easily make simple chips for tanks, airplanes, drones and missiles. Simple chips are often used in the military, but actually in all devices. A car contains thousands of chips, but only a few of them are the latest technology, Miller noted. In essence, Russia doesn't need the latest state-of-the-art chips to continue weapons production. The question is how Russia manages to keep its ASML equipment running for so long. Without new spare parts, a machine can break down after only a year, experts say. A number of small Russian importers could explain the circumvention. Customs records accessed by Trau show that, since the start of the Russo-Ukrainian war, they have gotten spare parts for ASML machines into the country at least 170 more times, and that lasted at least until December 2023. 
These are middlemen who scour the market for usable parts, such as the highly specialized ASML equipment. They then resell the imported goods to manufacturers in Russia. Some of these traders, such as AK Microtech and Ostec EC, are already on Western sanctions lists because they have proved important to the arms and chip industry. Other importers from the customs data accessed by Trow are not yet on sanctions lists. These include Kraftec from St. Petersburg and VLK Logistica from Moscow. In addition, the Dutch outlet notes that other ways Russia manages to acquire these chips is through middlemen in China and Serbia. Increasingly, there is more evidence on Western chips featured in Russian weapons which are being used against Ukraine.